my name is Jordan and welcome to part two of Casting a Coin for Tally Ho. So it's been a couple of weeks since I dropped the wax patterns off at Rod's Forge and he's been slowly building up layers of silica on those wax patterns ready for the wax to then be melted out and hot metal be poured in. So tomorrow we're going to head down to Rod's Forge, add the last coat of silica to the moulds and hopefully pour some hot metal. So while Rod was building up the layers on the wax patterns, it was mine and my brother's birthday, so I took a quick trip with my girlfriend to France to visit him where he was working the ski season. We were there for a week, we had an amazing time, and got back just before everything got shut down. So it's getting back from France, uh, I'm now working from home full time, so it's given me a great opportunity to catch up on some of my projects while still doing my day job. Also, uh, another project we've taken on is to start a little veg garden out back. Me and Nat have been digging up her mum's lovely lawn uh, in order to plant some of our own veg. So I'll also show you how that goes uh, as my videos come out. But for now, let's go and see how everything turns out and see if we can get a good replica of this coin. So what I've basically done is we've made uh, moulds for the coins. And the coins are very, very small. We've got a lot of detail on them. So what we need to do is to fix them with a pouring spout. And then what I do is surround them basically by a uh, sprue and then that feeds uh, bronze in at, the diff at different places. It also makes the mould quite strong. So what we've done is we've made a pouring cup. This is one that Jordan made and that's connected into the coin which is inside and I've added the sprue to go all the way around. And what that means is when the bronze goes through, it goes down these big tubes and puts bronze both in the top and in the bottom. So the idea is um, that it will uh, transmit as much hot bronze as quickly as possible. And so the process we use here basically is using uh, a binder and then covering it with, uh, in this instance, a silica. We can do it traditionally by using uh, clay slip and then soft clay. Um, there's lots of issues on shrinkage and things. And for our purposes, we're using a, a modern material. This is a, another similar mold, belongs to a friend of mine. And literally all we're gonna do, we're gonna dip that in the binder. And then all we do is just coat it with uh, different layers of silicate. And um, this, is, this is the courses of silicate. This is, by the time we get to the outside, we want the thing nice and strong. So this is like, uh, this is glass, basically, and it's about the same thickness as sugar. And uh, literally, we just, it's like dusting donuts, basically. And that's how it looks when it's all dusted in silicate. And this is what it looks like a number of hours later. So what will happen is this liquid will evaporate and it will change states. It changes from uh, alkaline to acid. When it uh, changes from alkaline to acid, it forms a chemical reaction and makes that happen now. So this is nice and firm. We can handle this. We can do all sorts of things with this. So what we've got in there is wax. We've got a feed to the coin, which is in there and a feed all the way around. What we've now got to do is to get that wax out. If we put that in an oven and um, set it at 100 degrees, melting point of, of the wax, then what will happen is the wax will expand faster than the silica and it will crack it or break it. So what we've actually got to do is heat uh, the mold very, very fast so that the temperature goes in and turns the wax instantly into liquid so there's no chance for it to expand and uh, break our mold so that's the next process okay so you've got four molds so we've got four chances on, on this thing so what i've tried to do is 
attach them so they're secure and we get enough bronze in there, but at the same time, I don't want to sort of destroy half of the uh, detail. Um, the other reason that I've put so much of a feed in is so that we do get more pressure because uh, bronze is pretty hot, pretty heavy, sorry. Uh, and you just feel the, the weight of that tiny little piece. Yeah. So you imagine when you get the, the bronze in that it's physically heavy and uh, obviously it will push the bronze into all those little bits yeah. of detail is the idea. So what we're going to do is just heat up the edges of the feeding cup. Um, hopefully where the mould touches the wax, it will turn liquid and will just pour straight out. Brilliant. finish them off in the furnace uh, so we need to get the furnace up to temperature and then we can heat them up and then heat the bronze so we put the crucible basically in the center of the furnace that will blow air around the crucible and that will get it up to somewhere in the region of 1100 degrees. Just getting that bottom lot of charcoal good and hot and uh, as the temperature increases the fire break just keeps all the heat in there and once it's properly alight we'll build it right up so that the centre of the furnace is good and hot eventually up to about 1100 degrees that's the boring bit so that's good and light now so we'll running about 700 degrees anyway so if you get a decent hot barbecue uh, up together um, by the time it's ready to cook uh, it's about 700 degrees so we're just adding that extra bit of air to take it up to um, 1080 to 1100 degrees well, what is the melting point of uh, it's about like this? it's about 1080 um, it's the same melting point as copper um, but, uh, bronze is a mixture of uh, tin and copper. Um, sometimes with phosphor bronzes and silicon bronzes, they'll add in phosphor and silicon for different purposes, for casting, for machinability and things like that. The ship uh, nail that you've got um, is probably a phosphor bronze. It's a, um, it's a nice ship's nail, so you can see that sort of polished color and it's not dissimilar. It's still hot enough. Cool enough, rather. So you can see, by the time we polish that up, it's going to be about the same colour. 
carve a little circle, that'd be ideal. Uh, I'm making a mini a mini version of the boat. So I can put that under the mark with the, uh, can do. With the tiny version. There you go. There's your mini coin. Coin for Tiny Tally Ho. Ready to go. Oh, it's hot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Slight differences in bronzes. So this is uh, higher, got a higher copper content than this one. So this is probably a silicon bronze. It's probably going to be about 20% tin and 80% um, copper. And then it's probably, so it's phosphor bronze, which you likely to be for a ship it's going to have some phosphor in there um, to, to uh, help the machine ability but you can see the difference they're pretty so what we'll do is we'll add a little bit more tin into the mix in order to uh, get it to as close we can to your sand will keep the heat in the mould as much as possible. There's the crucible. I just need to check that that's open. It just seemed to be. back. Hopefully there will be molten bronze in there. And that is it. We'll leave them in there for a second. Make sure they're frozen. And then we put them in water. To be careful on size because on a big one like that it will explode by putting it in the water so rapidly. I have had one explode on me. That was that. I had a wooden bucket, it uh, destroyed it and I lost a kilo of bronze and I know I know found it. There's probably still a little bit of bronze left in there. Yeah, it's still a little bit liquid you can see. So we could pull that out if we wanted to. Okay. 
So this is the bit that we're interested in. And see the reason we called by now. So you see the crack already. So I mean the truth, got four possibilities. Spruce there. That's fed well. But the first one didn't go. But there's a corner of it. So on the right lines. There you go, there's a corner. You can see the detail on the coin, but unfortunately it's a partial cast. We got the moulds fairly hot, but uh, that one didn't work. It was looking better. Ooh, more of it, but still not complete. Every time you do a cast, you learn something from it. They're all different. And it may be that we will have to feed them lots more places. You can see where the bronze is fed in, but you can also see where it's broken there, where that could be a little bit, tiny little bit of charcoal in there. But again, you can see the detail. Spruce looking good. Ooh, it looks like third time lucky. It's third time lucky. So we obviously managed to feed it well into the top there and well into the bottom. The bronze has gone in, into the coin, the sprue's gone, uh, it's gone around the sprue, it's got nice and hot and any air bubbles that were in there has been blown out and I can see detail on that so I think we're looking good. And our spare spare, interesting didn't feed completely, no that's partial cast as well. So there we go. Four chances and that one worked. So we can now cut that off, give it a polish and uh, see if we've got some detail. It was a sovereign you wanted, wasn't it? I think we got a sovereign. Trim away a little bit, a bit there, a little bit there, a little bit of like filing and dressing. I think you're done. Maybe some hand fettling now. Amazing. All the details there. You can even see the left side on the side. So settle that up, polish it up, clean it back, and let it. Uh, and then that's it, gets a little bit of pattern out of it. And you'll be able to see all that detail. Incredible. Yay. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since I went to Rod's and cast the coin. So we have these two points on either side where the bronze entered the mold uh, that need filing off. The coin matches the rest of the uh, pattern around the edge. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Shape and to what the coin should look like. 
So we're not too far off now. So I have these two stropping compounds, which I use for sharpening tools. Uh, and then I have this polishing compound, which came with the Dremel. There's one coin completely cast, all polished up and ready for its long journey all the way back to Squim and ready to be placed under the mast of Tallyho at her launch. It's been a great project to work on. I haven't done much metal work in the past and I really was quite naive going into the whole process of casting anything in metal. I thought it was quite a straightforward process, but obviously it's not. And it requires a lot of time, a lot of patience, and even then it can still go wrong. But needless to say, I'm pretty hooked and I look forward to doing a bit more metal work in the future. It's also been really nice to still work on something for Tally Ho. I had an amazing time last summer when I was out there as part of the second frame raising crew. And it's been a real nostalgia trip for me being able to work on something for the boat. And I'm sure it's gonna continue as I work on Tiny Tally Ho. I also wanted to thank Rod again for all of his help. This whole project just wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for him. I was so lucky in uh, finding him and him being so open with his knowledge and his time. Um, so thank you so much again, Rod. Um, he was a true professional to work with and I really look forward to doing some more work with him in the future. Please do go check out Rod's website and his YouTube channel. I've linked both down in the description below. As well as learning a new skill, it's also been great fun learning to make and edit videos. It's never something that I thought I'd be any good with because any time I've spent a long time in front of a computer in the past, I've ended up going a bit mad. And I've actually really enjoyed this whole process and it's been really nice to get such lovely feedback uh, in the comments. So if you do have any uh, notes or comments on the process or the video, please feel free to comment down below. I do like to read them and I do like to get back to as many as I can. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit the like button. And if you want to see more of what I get up to and the projects that are coming in the future, please do consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you're notified when my next video comes out. As I said, I've got a few more projects in the pipeline. I've got a tiny tally ho to build and I've got a restoration of an old vehicle that I've been working on for a couple of years now that it's about time I got finished. So hopefully I'll see you again soon in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.